boy, so episode 10, we reached two digits for Mocking a Mockingbird. So in this episode, basically, I show you how these uh, Steinberger style tuners work and install. And I needed just to get the two E's in so I could basically drill two holes. So to figure out where the bridge goes, get those two holes, I didn't even put the bushings in yet. Now, well, either way. So um, I just got everything aligned. I talked you through most of it, so we're just gonna keep this intro kind of short. But tuners, two holes. So I started on this, ends up, it is too thin, but for the purpose of getting strings to sit so I can get the proper alignment of the bridge, it'll work. I'll have to make another one, but I can do that later. So. One thing I didn't talk about, I really liked the shape of this headstock, the way it worked with the body of the guitar. I actually took curves off of the guitar, moved them to here, transferred them in to get it to line up. And I really liked that, but there was no good way of getting these to line up without the strings going in all different directions. So in order to keep them straight, it wouldn't work with regular tuners. So I'm using these Steinberger tuners so basically this will come apart and so these will come through like this once it all gets put back together these will actually be your tuners up here on the face of it so they can be perfectly in line and get everything to work out here without having to worry about the spacing from the edge to here with tuners that would be on the side so I'm going to get my two E's in there so I could uh, start getting uh, strings to align uh, for the bridge. Uh, sorry about that confusion. I said that it goes this way and you'd see this on the top of the tuning. I just thought of it wrong. Tuners are actually on the back. This is the clamp for the strings. So it actually goes in this way. So I said that wrong. So this is the right way. Put that in. There's just like a little pin that you gotta aim in the direction of the nut. And then you just tighten it to get a little dimple. And then you drill a little pilot in the dimple. And that keeps it from turning, just like every tuner has. Normally would have a screw or something. This just, you get in there somehow on an angle, you can see. I don't know, I don't know if you can see it there a little bit. Little dimple, goes in a halt. Flip that back, I can see it. 16th inch and you go about an eighth deep. I'm not gonna put tape on this bit to get an eighth. If the hair over, it's not gonna do anything. All right, put that in the dimple. And you've got spacer, it's not really a washer because it's like a quarter inch thick. At what dimension do you stop calling it a washer and start calling it a spacer? Does anybody know that? I never, never was thought of that. Flush than that. More flush. I mean, I can get it flush. Can you be more or less flush? Either it's flush or it's not. It's like people talking about a complete stop. By definition, a stop is complete. <laughs> it's redundant. I don't know where that came from. But... All right. It's in there. Uh... 
couple grooves in the shaft. So there's two set screws at different depths. So one goes in each one. So it's getting a touch. It's not falling out. So I can tighten that. So I've never used these before. The only thing I'm worried about is in the directions. It says on the high E, it's the way this works compared to a regular tuner. The string gets, this is the clamp, the string gets clamped in and as you tune it, it physically pulls down instead of wrapping around. So it says for the high E, you might have to take your whammy bar and lower it a little bit just to pull the string farther when you tighten it so you have enough adjustment. Well, I got a fixed bridge on here. So hopefully I can get that, you know, tight enough when I clamp it, but I have enough to tune it. I'll have to see. If not, I'll have to come up with something. I will. It'll probably take a lot of steps to do it, too. But I just walk up and say, doubt that surprises you. I love you. So I'm going to get a close-up of how these work. Um, I've never used these before. In case anybody else needs some kind of a solution for some tuner issues of any sort. The good thing about it, there's a hole way down here. So where the string comes to this will be touching basically that flange. So it will be really close to the headstock. So someone that wants to get rid of using a string tree or something, you know, this could bring it closer to the plane of the headstock. So basically you got to get the string through that little hole. Low E. Here's going to be the high E. Now this is where they were saying you might have to pull the tremolo out. But it's not really an option on this one. So I'm not even going to go with more tension yet until I get the bridge in place. And then we could play around with the placement. All right, so I got a clamp in place, holding it so it doesn't move. This isn't the real nut. I slotted it. Uh, oh, here we go. It's fell off. So, placement. Oh, I'm actually not even that. Even if it's a little bit wide there, it's not gonna matter for height and distance away from the nut to figure out the bridge. So I'm, you know, I'll have a new nut. So if this spacing changes a little bit in and out, it will be fine. This is not the real nut. But that's what we need for now. All right, so this is your 12th fret. 12, 5 sixteenths. Times two is 24 and 5 eighths, which is what I'm going for. So I really like that 12th fret inline. It just seems like something so obvious that everybody would do. And when it comes down to it, nobody does it. So I've got my line drawn here. I put tape just to make it easier to see through the line. When it comes down to it, I do not need the tape to be this wide. Well, I need it that wide, but I don't need the whole thing. All I need is the lines on the outside because it's hidden. So I revealed the stripes here, just pull some tape off. So when I'm getting my alignments, I can see how it is in relation to what's gonna look straight here. But more importantly, what I need to do is get it where it's straight where the strings are on the neck here. And then over there, I can get the strings straight just by moving that clamp because that nut is not glued in place. So as I'm doing this, I can double check where that's at, slide it slightly, 
slide everything around, get everything to work. And then unfortunately, on this particular bridge, the, the studs get hidden. So it's just underneath. So I can't really mark it from the top. So I'm gonna have to mark the front line. I'm gonna have to, um, I guess I could see how good it is in relation to the center. And if I got the front line, I can measure back for where it gets drilled. And the overall spacing, I can measure from the center if this is centered or it's off by a little, I can mark where I measure from, something like that. I'm gonna have to figure exactly the best way to compensate for any adjustments that I do. If I just center it, then why am I doing this step? So, you know. Do you understand? You come up with something like no holes in the top, you figure it out. All right, so it's time to locate this bridge. Um, I kind of wish I had one of the small, like the skinny metal rulers, the long ones, you know, better than a tape measure, but I don't. I could see those being in, coming in handy. I see people putting them on here, and then once you get to here, it kind of bends down anyway, and that takes up, you know, a certain amount of distance, so it's not 100% precision, and you have adjustment here. So I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I got a tape measure, and then I've actually checked this. This is a, this is a drywall square, but, and you know me don't care of on this. It'll get beaten up. But if I was to take the 24 to the 24, where was I? It is, I'd say it's hard to read because it is the thing. Well, you get the idea. I did it in an angle that, you know, you can't see anything. But either way, I checked it. It's on. And that's gonna stay straight so I don't get any bend in it. This right here is something you would trust more, so I'm gonna do that, but it could get a little bent, so I'm gonna measure both ways. Uh, get that placed, get it to where I'm happy, mark the front of it. Then, I'm gonna measure here, I'm gonna, you know, I can manipulate this, make sure everything looks good. Also, go along the center line with the center two here. I could also, on the A and B, eyeball from a direction here and look at these Wenge stripes and see they're somewhere in the vicinity of those so I can use those as references and then once everything looks good double check here that's going to be the most important one I can mark my sides then I can figure out the measurement of where the holes get drilled so I've got all the dimensions so here we go So let's wrap this up. We went through uh, we went through the tuners. You can see how that works. I added backwards at first, and then uh, 
realize I had that wrong, but I corrected it, so you guys saw how that really works. What is that? A twisted system pin on your uniform? Yeah. Uh... So, uh, I got the bridge lined up. I got everything going for that. I got the two holes drilled. I told you, that was the, that was the whole episode, was showing you the tuners, two holes. So I didn't even push the bushings in yet. I don't think I want them there for the finishing process. Um, same reason, I don't have the ferules in yet. I just have the two in the back. They're sticking out. That's just to hold the ball, the string, just for this process. Um, so I guess the next step, steps that are coming up are, I gotta get all the finished sanding before I can get that stuff in, you know, and, and the finishing. So I just gotta make sure all my contours are good, go through that. When I uh, started the neck, but I didn't have the heel, you know, blended in. I didn't know how much material exactly I was gonna take off, so I just left it bigger and figure I would just work it once this is done. So this might get a little more dialed in, but it kind of tapers to about maybe ninth or 10th fret, and then it actually gets thicker again. So I'm gonna have to finalize that. You know, I might change, you know, the volute a little bit. I like how it looks, you know, once I taper down and come into it. See what happens. It depends how I feel at the time. And, uh, yeah, so things are moving along. They're looking good. The other thing, I didn't get on video at all, but just for testing, I used this tried and true original wood finish that is like a satin. Um, it's just linseed oil, beeswax, and that's it. You rub it on. Um, so I just took a cut off piece that I had. It's the same piece I used uh, to check my round over depth before I did this. So the edge isn't perfect, but I'll kind of show ya. You know, with just one coat, you know, looks good. And you can see the steps here, but I was, you know, when I was testing the depth for the bit, I wasn't worried about getting that perfect. The side's not perfect, but the flat sides, you can see. There's another version of the same product that is uh, more of a semi-gloss, that is uh, linseed oil and uh, tree sap. I think, uh, specifically, I think it's pine sap. And that one's uh, a little more of a semi. So I'll just use some of my test pieces that I have that are on the proper colors. This one, I didn't even do any grain filler yet. I just wanted to see which one of your coats, what it, uh, what it does to these colors. I think it looks good. I think I'm gonna go with one or the other of these finishes. So I'm gonna maybe do another test piece with the other one and then decide. So, uh, Yeah, oh, last episode I was talking about how I'm filming everything on, I think I said on my camera, which doesn't make sense. I mean, of course it's a camera, but I'm using the phone and it's way less than convenient, you know, and I want to do some kind of an upgrade there. And another problem I have with this phone is it automatically like downloaded this filter and I can't figure out how to get it off. And what the filter does, I mean, most of the time, you don't even notice it's there. But then I turn around and then bam, it makes me look like I'm bald. And I'm not bald, it's the camera. So I need a different camera because I can't turn the filter off of the camera on my phone. So that's my main issue with the phone, really. I can deal with the cloud, you know it sucks. You know, I can deal with the battery life, you know it sucks. Um, you know, audio, I guess, could be better. So that's just kind of half-ass. But the ball, yeah, that's it. I'm not ball. Mocking, mocking, bro. Episode 10.